Jeffrey was found not guilty of murdering his ex-wife, Nicole, and her friend, Ron Goldman, O.J. went so far as to write a, a, a brazenly titled book, If I Did It. He talked about the title in a 2006 interview with 1080 AM in Miami. Listen to this. That was their title. They came into the project with that as a title. At least that's what was the title that was brought to me. I didn't bring anybody a bill. I didn't pitch anything. All right, needless to say, this book outraged the victims' families and many others who thought he was gloating that he uh, may have gotten away with murder, literally. Let's debate it. Straight out to my expert panel. Did O.J. have this robbery and kidnapping conviction in the Las Vegas memorabilia confrontation coming? Did he deserve it, starting with John Lieberman? Well, look, the bottom line is that at every opportunity, O.J. Simpson has thumbed his nose at the victims in all of these cases. This one is no exception. Now, look, I don't think this is payback in any way for the murder acquittal. But I'll tell you, Jane, this is grasping at straws. In 2010, the Nevada Supreme Court rejected O.J. Simpson's appeal. This is just going to be another rejection for O.J. Randy Zellin for the defense. First of all, karma has absolutely no place in a courtroom. That was then. This is now. Trials are decided on the evidence. As far as what he's doing today, it's only a Hail Mary when it happens to someone else. But if you believe that you got bad advice, if you believe that you relied on your lawyer and now you're behind bars, if you believe that you had an opportunity to resolve your case and weren't told about it, if you believe that you would have testified and, and a, there would have been a different result, well, he's got every right to do what he's doing right now. Uh, Rolanda Watts, host of Sundays with Rolanda. You know what? I have to agree with the gentleman there. Um, he has every right to argue for his case, especially if he feels he was wronged. But somehow I think that O.J. has this warped sense of reality. I don't know how you think you can go walking in with a band of guys wielding guns and telling people don't leave the room and not find that that's a crime somewhere. Um, I think that's pretty much what the public is feeling, that O.J. has gotten away, maybe with a lot, but uh, he seems to think he can. But listen, one of the things he's proven is that where there is doubt, there's a chance. And he's but proven listen, that tremendously. So. Stacey Hodowitz, a, a lot of people think he was convicted of this robbery on the anniversary of his acquittal on the infamous murder trial. He got 33, up to 33 years, which matches approximately the millions that he was ordered to pay the family of one of the victims. I mean, is there a message in all this? Well, I think people might think there's a message, but we can't go into the mind of the judge and determine why she sentenced him the way that he did. He fell a certain pl a place on the guidelines, and that's what she gave him. And right now, as all your other guests have said, he has every right in the world to bring this motion. And a lot of people, when they're unhappy with the results of their case, bring what is called an ineffective assistance of counsel motion. That means that the judge can look it over, and the judge makes the decision. And in this case, he was unhappy with the result, and I think the judge is going to deny it. I can't imagine that this lawyer would have put his interest above his. If there was a plea offer on the table, it wouldn't have been conveyed. And under most circumstances, a judge will ask if there's any, law, any uh, pleas on the table and will also ask if the defendant wishes to testify. So the testimony is going to be very interesting to see what O.J. is 